It's another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily, episode 1687, and I'm Dr. Neil Malik. Hey there, happy Friday, and welcome to another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily, where I answer your health questions related to fitness, diet and nutrition, and lots more. You send in the questions, and I answer them for you. Now, if you want to know more about me and my background and my credentials and my motivation for doing this podcast and all of these Q&A episodes, definitely check out last week's Q&A episode. On the first Q&A of every month, that's where I go into more details about all of that. But on the other episodes, I like to spare you from that very long intro. So today's one of those days where I'm gonna spare you from that long intro. So let's get right to today's question as we optimize your life. Today's question came via email. Neve writes, Hi there, big fan of the show and love the daily episodes. I was curious to hear your opinion on the rise of adding organ meat to your diet. I've seen people eating things like cow liver or heart even, raw or mixed in with other ground meats. I was hoping you'd be able to shed some light on the benefits or risks of these types of foods in the diet. Thank you for taking the time to send in your question, longtime listener Neve. Consuming organ meats is interesting because it's actually been going on for as long as humans have been consuming animal flesh. So in my mind, this isn't a fad necessarily. Instead, it's kind of like a reconnection to our ancestors. Now, sometimes organ meats are called OFAL, O-F-F-A-L. Regardless, both terms are referring to the internal organs of an animal. Now, these can include any organ from head to toe from the animal's brain to its heart, liver, kidneys, tongue, stomach, intestines, and can include actually some of its appendages like the tail. Now I should mention that muscle and bone are not considered organ meats or offal. Many cultures around the world value the consumption of organ meats because it's considered nutritious. Sometimes it's even seen as a delicacy. For example, the very expensive pate and foie gras Pâté and foie gras are made from an animal's liver. And also think about the Scottish delicacy haggis, which is made from a sheep's liver, lungs, some organ fat, and oatmeal, all boiled in the animal's stomach. In Mexico, menudo is quite popular. Menudo is made from the cow's stomach and mixed with spices and hominy, which is dried corn. Again, all of this to say that consuming organ meats isn't necessarily new. It's just more popular in some cultures. In the U.S., it's not very popular. Now, certain regions of the U.S. may consume it more than others. For example, chitterlings are more popular in the South. Chitterlings are made from pig intestines. But in the U.S., most organ meats are consumed in small amounts and possibly without even realizing it. For example, the casings of sausages and hot dogs are made from animal intestines. Sausages and hot dogs are popular food throughout the U.S. Now, either way, average rates of organ meat consumption in the U.S. is nowhere near other areas like Hong Kong, Mongolia, and Australia. These regions actually consume the highest quantities of organ meats. Now, in case you were wondering, the U.S. ranks 171st out of a total of 175 countries when it comes to average organ meat consumption. So, are organ meats helpful or harmful? Well, it turns out that organ meats contain lots of nutrients. They contain protein, because organs like muscle are made up of proteins, along with vitamins A and D, and like other animal products, vitamin B12. They also contain minerals like iron, zinc, and selenium. By the way, Rod and Todd Flanders, Ned Flanders boys from The Simpsons, were right when they said, oh boy, liver, iron helps us play. In fact, when compared to other parts of the animal, organ meat is usually higher in vitamin B12 and iron. So it seems that organ meats are a nutrient-dense protein source. Oh, and if anyone's concerned that certain organ meats like liver and kidneys contain lots of toxins, that's a myth. Both of these organs act like a filter, not a storehouse for toxins. They filter toxins out to allow the body to dispose of them. Now, before recommending everyone consume offal or organ meats, there are some things to keep in mind. First, there is a concern about consuming the brain and any brain fluid from animals. This is because the brains of these animals may contain harmful compounds 
called prions. Prions are believed to be viruses that can lead to coitsfeld jacob disease in humans, better known as mad cow disease. Also, consuming any raw meat is usually not a great idea. Raw meats, or raw eggs for that matter, aren't absorbed all that well by the body. Plus, there's the risk of getting food poisoning from undercooked or raw meats and eggs. Also, organ meats contain a lot of cholesterol. Now, there's been an ongoing debate about whether the cholesterol we get from foods actually increases our blood levels of cholesterol, but most health professionals believe that we should still watch how much cholesterol we get from foods each day. And in fact, a couple of studies have looked at the effects of consuming organ meats on overall health, including blood cholesterol levels. A well-designed study was conducted in China, for example, that followed over 15,000 people for over four years. The researchers looked at organ meat consumption and the risk for developing a fatty liver. They found that organ meat consumption was related to a higher risk of developing a fatty liver. Another well-designed study followed over 1,300 Iranians for a period of 13 years. The researchers found that each single serving increase in organ meat consumption was significantly associated with an increase in fat in the blood, or fancy name, triglycerides, along with total cholesterol and bad cholesterol levels in the blood, fancy name, LDL cholesterol. All of these are risk factors for developing cardiovascular disease, like heart attack and stroke. The other things we need to keep in mind are that organ meats may come from animals that are considered red meats. There are many, many studies that have found consuming red meat regularly can increase disease risk. This may be because red meat increases inflammation throughout the body in some individuals. I haven't seen any studies that looked at organ meat consumption and inflammation in the body. Because of the lack of studies, there aren't any specific recommendations about how often organ meats should be consumed. So what's the bottom line? I would say that if consuming red meat doesn't seem to bother you, and you enjoy the taste of organ meats, you can occasionally include them into your diet or your recipes. But I would caution against consuming the brains or spinal fluid from animals. And since we don't have recommendations on how much organ meat is too much and how much will actually raise cardiovascular disease risk or risk of developing a fatty liver, no need to go overboard on these. Early studies are finding they may raise the risk for certain diseases But if you can include them sparingly in your diet, they likely won't raise your risk for disease all that much. Right now, hiring is challenging. It's time for a hiring partner that can help you rise to the challenge. That's Indeed. Indeed partners with you on every step of the hiring process. Find great talent through time-saving tools like Indeed Instant Match, assessments, and virtual interviews. With Instant Match, as soon as you sponsor a post, you get a short list of quality candidates with resumes on Indeed that match your job description. And you can invite them to apply right away. Plus, you only pay for quality applications that meet your must-have requirements. I love that Indeed makes hiring all in one place so easy. Indeed helps you see your top talent's abilities faster with 135 assessment tests. Start hiring right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at indeed.com slash health. Offer valid through April 30th. Go to indeed.com slash health to claim your $75 credit before April 30th. Indeed.com slash health. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Thank you again for sending in your question, longtime listener, Neve. Now, if you want to send me a question, remember, you can email one to health at oldpodcast.com. Or if you want to send in an audio question and have your voice played on the show, we still take those types of questions. Just come by oldpodcast.com slash ask. Or you can call in your audio question. The number is 61 I love ohd All right, thank you so much for listening every day. Thank you for listening all the way through. Hope you have a great start to your weekend and I'll see you back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.